I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm still talking about Carlo M. Chipalo's law of stupidity. And in fact, he didn't want people to know about these principles. He shared it only among his friends. It was funny, but absolutely very true. There were five laws before we come to the four quadrangles. One of the laws among the five laws is that we inadvertently underestimate the number of stupid people, stupid people in society. And that is true. A time comes in your life when you start having spiritual insights and understanding, even in the church and in society, you will find out that stupid people are overwhelmingly in the majority. And ignorant people are usually the most critical and the quickest to speak and the loudest. We'll come to another theory later. They think they know. They will have overconfidence. Dunning-Kruger phenomenon. They think they know and they think they have great understanding. And in fact, if you apply Parkinson's law of frivolities, you also find that when you go to a meeting, it's people who don't know that talk more during the meeting. Even in WhatsApp groups, you'll find out that there's people who talk rubbish that are most vocal. The professor there, the technically inclined individual, skilled professional, will not talk much. It's just the it's just it's like when you drop a tin of milk from a story building. The milk that has tin of milk that has content will not make much noise. It is the one that does not have content that will make. That's how it is in social media. The lousiest person is the most critical, most talkative, all over the place. So, a time came I was questioning my sanity in church and outside the church. At one time, I had to be removed from the church committee when I asked a question. So you will find out that when God starts revealing things to you that are interrogating the popular belief and operational procedures of church organizations and religious organizations, the tendency is to call you names and to say you are rebellious. They will say you are carnal. They will say you are not scriptural. They will say you are a motivational speaker. Uh, at one time, in this small town where I reside, they said that uh, I talk about principles instead of uh, spirituality, instead of the promises of God, instead of prophecies. And they even said they should not invite me to their churches. But today, they are all sneaking back to invite me to speak to them when it comes to principles that can change their lives. Because they found that there are a lot of things they are teaching in the church assassinates the intellect, assassinates the intellect. A church just invited me now that I should come and speak to their men, that the men are not able to meet financial obligations, marital uh, responsibility, and fatherly duties. And I knew it would end up like that because what they were teaching them will assassinate their intellect and paralyze their entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial spirit. So, the time comes to start questioning your sanity. Am I the abnormal person or are they the normal? And because they are in the majority and they are vocal and they know how to support themselves and they have more experience in stupidity, I think it's um, Twain that said that you should not argue with a, a stupid person, that he will mess you up because he has more experience in stupidity. And I would add they are in the majority. So what do you do? Just excel. Do well with the principles you have learned. If I had been a failure after selling my medical practice 
after abandoning the church and doing what I am doing, people will not listen to me. Because Jesus said, don't listen to me for what I say alone. Listen to me for what I do. There is none of my meat anywhere in the world that will intimidate me with anything. Even though I live in Nigeria and I live in a suburban economy, I live in a small town. Because the principles I was advocating more than 20 years back, 30, 20 to 20 something years back, have produced tangible results that are acclaimed globally. At one time, they will even tell you, well, well, if you are very, very educated and you are not anointed, it will not take you far. But we have proven that you can be anointed, you can be educated and still do well. So what you must make sure you do well and excel with your principles that you know. That's why the intelligent man benefits society and benefits himself. So you must make sure your intelligence produces results. Number two, we'll withdraw from them. I don't attend any meetings, professional bodies, old students associations, uh, town unions, tribal unions, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. In fact, they suspended me at one time for not attending meetings. But they, they all come back and invite me. Number three, vigorously fight back any person that wants to infect your brain with stupidity and idiocy. People say I am rude, I am brash, I am not civil. I am not civil. I don't want to impress you. I don't want you to like me. Because a stupid person is a very dangerous person, as we will see. So don't defend your territory, intellectual territory, very violently. Whip any person that comes near your, your, your intellectual territory with intellectual koboko. The next thing is select your company. You can't be friends to every person. The next thing is that I don't go everywhere. I don't share my ideas with every person, if not for YouTube. There are some churches I warn them before I go to preach. I am not a normal pastor. If you want church, want me to preach church and religion, I will not come. If you want me to preach the sociology of the Bible and the developmental Christianity, list with the spirituality, then I will come. If not, come and tell me to preach to you. If I do God's work, he will do my work. God is not your house boy. He prescribed work from, for us from the book of Genesis. Walk the land. And if you have a stupid mentality and entitlement mentality, don't invite me to your church. I won't come. And so I select my friends. I select where I go to. I deafen my ears to their criticisms and their innuendos of what they think I should be. And then dare to walk alone, forgetting what is behind, keep pressing towards the mark of higher calling. And always ask God to vindicate you by making sure you don't fall his hand that you produce results. I once told God, if I fail, young people from my community will not become Christians. If I fail, intellectuals will not become Christians. My community invited me to speak on the light has come. And when they were praying, every spirit in the river, every spirit in Otokutu River, every demon, every darkness, I told them there is no demon in the river. I told them there is no darkness covering the land. My father saw the land, the, the light, many years back. And he told me that schooling was what he did not have. And I must school. Exposure was what he did not have. That I must go far from the worry environment and go far 
so that I can get exposed. And when I spoke to them, one of them came and said, is this not Emekbu's son? Emekbu that we used to make fun of. Look at him now. That's the way it is. The Igbo say, Onukurujo gekuma. The mouth that says evil about you will come to say good. Stupid people have bad mouths. They are critical. They are insulting. They have bad mouths. Just make sure you excel. Silence them with your success. That's what Robo people call Igbunu. Igbunu, mouth blocker. Just succeed. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki, the area grandfather. A seminar is coming up online on the 5th and on the 6th of July. My monthly mentorship masterclass webinar. Send a message to plus 234-7052-136763. I will send you the flyer or send a message to plus 234 8021219262. The admin of the masterclass will send you the flyer. God bless you, and I have properties for sale. I'm your friend, <laughs> Dr. Charles Apoki.